in his word. What is that new covenant contract? I'll tell you where it's based squarely upon what he did at the cross and the resurrection. What are you getting at, preacher? What I'm telling you, when he said it is finished, that crossed every eye, it dotted every line, it put a pyramid, period at the end of it. No questions asked. When he said it was finished, all things were finished. People don't want to stand in it no more. In the faith. The thing is, people don't know what they believe no more. Uh oh. I'm about ready to say something. I've noticed people, but a lot of people don't know the Word of God. I see people run. <laughs> this disturbs me. It don't matter where I go as an evangelist, pastor, I've seen it in my how many? 16. How many? Well, how many years? I can't remember numbers tonight. What year is this? 2016. 16 years of ministry. I've seen people hit the pews when things go, everything, when everything's going right, they'll shout the walls down. But then when everything's going wrong, they give up on God. It ain't a time to give up on God. It's time to get focused on what God is saying. It's time to hang on to the Word of God. Telling somebody, I said, you take that word of God in there. You read that word of God over that hospital bed. Some would say, why? I said, because it's life. And I believe you can speak life into situations. When you speak the word of God, you're speaking life. Don't The doctors may say one thing, but speak the word of God. And I believe that. Anybody know what I'm talking about tonight? I believe you speak the word of God in your situations. I believe you stand on what God is telling you in these days that we're living. We've got to stand fast in the faith. Uh, it ain't a time to back off. It is a time to stand strong. Anybody know it? It is a time for the church to come together and rise up in the name of Jesus Christ. It ain't a time to fall short. It's a time for the church to shine its brightest. We're the vessels that he's sent. You know something? The world ain't scared to tell you what they believe. The world ain't scared to tell you what they think about something. Why is it the church is scared to stand in their faith and declare, Thus said the Lord. Are we really living in our faith? Are we really standing strong in the faith? Are we really standing fast in the faith? I'm telling you, it ain't time to let the devil have his way. It's a time for us to close the door on the devil and say, wait just a minute. This house is guarded by a security system. I got a security guard right here. I don't call ADT, and I ain't dialing 911. I'm calling Jesus. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Jesus will do far greater than any ADT will ever do. But this devil's come to keep in. Wants to destroy what you believe. He'll work many ways, but we've got to stand fast in the doctrine of Jesus Christ. I've come too far to go back now. I've come too far to go back now. I'm standing strong what I believe. It ain't a time to get lukewarm. And it ain't a time to start getting compromised. Here it is. Well, maybe we need to compromise with these liberal groups. I'm not compromising with these liberal groups. I'm not compromising with the ways of the world. If God said it was wrong, it's still wrong today. We've got to stand strong in the faith. Some things you won't, you know... I can't compromise the Word of God. You can't either. You can't compromise that. There'll be people that tell you, compromise, don't you know that these other religions serve the same God? No, they do not. I'm not compromised. 
Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father except by the Son. Somebody told me one time, don't you know that this is just their way to get to heaven? I busted their bubble a little bit. I am get ready to make your mouth. Some of your mouth are going to drop. I said, yeah, it's going to get them to heaven, all right. But that ain't worth what you ain't talking what I'm talking about. The part of heaven they're going to get to, Allah's going to get them to heaven, but not in the streets of gold. He's going to get them a court date at the great white throne judgment where they still got to stand before him. Let me tell you, the only way to have eternal life tonight is through Jesus Christ. The only way we're going to make heaven our home is through Jesus Christ. We've got to stay strong in the faith. We can't compromise with the world. We've got to stand fast and know that he's going to show up right on time. We've got to stand fast even though it's growing more wickeder. He's coming again. Even though the world's more vile that he's coming again. we got to stand fast in our faith. We can't let our faith be destroyed. If we're going to make it, we've got to have faith. Anybody know what I'm talking about? If you denounce Christ and walk out, it would have been a room for you not to have known the way of righteousness. Then have known it to turn from it. How about this one? You've got to stand fast in the word of God. I go back into the Old Testament. Hosea, the Lord spoke about Israel right here. He said, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. That thou shalt be no more priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of God. I will also forget thy children. Let me tell you why many are defeated tonight. It's because they don't know the word of God. It is so important. Not just here on Sunday mornings. Not just here on Wednesday nights or Wednesday nights or Bible studies. It is so important to have the Word of God in your everyday routine. Anybody know what I'm talking about? It is so important to know the very words of God. Let me tell you what I believe happening right now. We've got too many with dull swords and not sharp swords. Let me tell you, they can be deceived by any old wind of doctrine that comes their way. But when I have a sharp sword, let me tell you what, that devil, when he gets a hold of that sharp sword, one little stick is going to send him a running. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Down there in Robbinsville, I, got, I think I told this story. My mind's not all there tonight. I've already forgot my age. I already forgot how long I've been preaching. <laughs> so, <laughs> I got a hold of some Mormons. <laughs> they were on their bicycles. I applauded them for being on their bicycles. Dr- to put, ride their bicycles almost 50 miles to get to that town. I'll give them that. That's more than some Christians. <laughs> they asked me, they didn't know I was a preacher. I had my old King James Bible in there with me. I told them, I said, if you give me, I'll give you 10 minutes of my time if you'll promise me when you're done that you'll give me 10 minutes of your time. All right, I took notes of all the things they were twisting and quoting from the book of Mormon. I finally went, I said, now let's go back and let's get these scriptures in context. Jesus said, you put Joseph Smith calling him an angel, but show me the angel rising out of Revelation. I said, that ain't got nothing to do with that. That's got to talk about judgments right there, the book of Revelation. You say Jesus ain't who he says he is, but you're denying the very words of Christ in John chapter 1. Took him to John chapter 1. I know one of those with him was uh, their elder. Because when you study these like the 
Mormons or the Jehovah's Witness, you'll find out a lot of these kids, they grab these kids and they brainwash them with the doctors. That young man, I got the Holy Ghost began to give me the words to speak to him. I can't remember everything I began to speak to him. But I know I went into John chapter 1. And I went into Re- Revelation and I went into the book of Galatians. Showing them you're not saved by the works. It's good you do that, but that don't mean a hill of beans before God. I said we're saved by grace. That one little boy, if it wasn't for his schoolmaster, what I would call him, pulling him away, I believe he would have come to the Lord that very day. But his teacher pulled him away. I know that I was striking a chord with his teacher too because the things I had to give them, they really didn't have an answer for. And we're going to talk about that here in a few minutes, standing strong in the Holy Ghost. The problem of it is, you know what I'm saying is, if somebody wouldn't have knew the Word of God, these old boys could have deceived somebody. I had some Jehovah Witnesses come to me one time, and I asked them this question. You say only 144,000 are going to heaven, right? You know, I ain't what that's talking about. That's talking about the Jews in the, in the tribulation period. I said, let me ask you this. Don't you think there's been 144,000 of y'all already went there? What makes you think you're going to be in there? Their mouth went like that. All right. <laughs> I'm telling you right there. You've got to know the word of God right now or you'll be so easily deceived by any old wind of doctrine. Anything that sounds good may not be good. I believe in trying the spirit. Very few TV preachers that I will watch. I got one network I stay on most of the time. I listen to Donnie Swagger and I'll listen to Perry Stone. That's probably pretty much about it. Because when I hear, I can catch, I get in there and hear them say comments and things like that. I want to go through the TV sometimes. What are you talking about? One guy on a network said that Jesus was jealous of the Holy Ghost. Really? And the sad thing is, you ought to have seen the audience that jumped up and shouted Hallelujah. And you got this one that's selling tribulation backpacks. Seven year food supplies. I don't know who's crazier, him or the ones that send the money. <laughs> I'm telling you, people don't know the word of God. If you know the word of God, I don't have to worry about that because he's already said. He'll take care of it. We were being removed before that. <laughs> I thought to myself, really? People are destroyed because of a lack of knowledge. We've got to stand fast. Can I tell you, this is serious right here. I've seen something. They're coming out with a, a gay family Bible. It's called not the King James, but the Queen James. Where are we at? Where are we at? Throw that garbage out right there. I'm telling you, it's scary. And people are being destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Paul told us, Ephesians 6 and 17, he said, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Let me hit that helmet of salvation real quick. What does a helmet do to your brain if you're playing football? My boys, the Cowboys, they knocked somebody's heads off real hard. They should have stayed. (laughs) I had to. But you wear a helmet in football, NASCAR, in any physical sport like that, or even a soldier on the field to protect their head, don't you, from being hit. That helmet of salvation protects us. Paul said we have to renew our mind, don't we? What do we put on our mind? The Word of God, don't we? I believe we put that helmet of salvation which represents the Word of God along with the sword of the Spirit. How many know where the devil's playground is? It's right here. Anybody ever had a... Anybody ever just know the devil was playing? Hit your things there. It ain't even really there. I know I have. As a pastor, you'll fight things like this. And I'm sure as a believer, you will too. As a pastor, I fight it left and right. 
But I found out what the announce is at is the word of God. Is the very words of God. Paul's 